approach the 2021 inauguration, I wanted to wrap up my political videos, which were just an experiment for the year of the cough, 2020. But I feel I owe it to uh, history and the facts to make one last video here, just as a news roundup before we reach peace and unity at our nation's 2021 presidential inauguration. First of all, very importantly, this is an update on my previous video where I erroneously claimed that a man sh shown widely on social media of throwing a fire extinguisher at Capitol Police in the widely shared video this person had simply injured a police officer he was arrested uh, and by his hat he was a, apparently a retired member of a police department who arrived at the Capitol for a total of 10 minutes while President Trump was still speaking at the other end of the National Mall threw his fire extinguisher at police and left within a 10 minute period. So in keeping with what I noticed in my previous videos those who violently attacked Capitol Police those who broke windows, destroyed barricades broke doors to force their way into the Capitol building they had already started doing this 20 minutes before President Trump finished his speech. These people did not come to the Capitol to hear Donald Trump speak. If you are, travel across the whole country to listen to the commands and instructions of your hero, Donald Trump, you're not attacking anybody while Donald Trump is still speaking at the other end of, of the District of Columbia. This man was not a fan of Donald Trump, although he, his attorney and the defense attorneys of all these other people that broke into the Capitol, they will all have the same identical defense, that their client broke into the Capitol building because they were mind-numbed sheep, mind-numbed robots who were following the precise orders of President Trump to commit violence and break into the Capitol building. That's what the defense attorneys are going to claim for the next year, years on end, this will never end. But he was not guilty of what police were seeking him for. He was guilty of still throwing that fire extinguisher at police. So I, I, uh, I hope they throw the book at him. Now, just to tie into that, this is Rev.com. They are the company that I relied on for the transcript of Joe Biden's August 2020 speech in Pittsburgh where Joe Biden attacked law enforcement, Joe Biden attacked police officers as being presumed guilty until proven innocent. So Rev.com does a very valuable service, regardless of your political beliefs or political orientation. Here in their transcript, which was made the same day of the uh, Save America rally, January 6, I want to search here. Search for the first occurrence of the word peace during Donald Trump's actual speech. Donald Trump at the 18 minute 16 second mark. We have come to demand that Congress do the right thing and only count the electors who have been lawfully slated. Lawfully slated. You see, this was not from a printed speech. This was Trump's actual words, what he actually said. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. So there you have it, folks. By his own words, Donald Trump should not have been impeached by a partisan House of Representatives. Donald Trump did not incite anyone to insurrection. There was no attempted coup. And what the media is lying about here is not based on fact, but just wishful thinking. Now I wanted to go into something light here. One thing we can be certain of if we can this shut up Tucker Carlson for five seconds. Uh, CNN reported that Representative Liu of California grabbed a crowbar amid the Cal Capitol riot. He actually grabbed a probar. A probar. No, I don't want to see your pop-up window after I've already shut it up. So he's uh, CNN's ace reporting. How do they have all these editors look at a news story and just assume that Rep Representative Ted Lieu of California regularly keeps a crowbar in his o legislative office. Was the crowbar there to help him 
win over other people with his legislation. No, he had a pro bar energy bar. So a little bit of fun there. In CNN's uh, edition.cnn.com, CNN reports something interesting. Plainclothes detective, Metrolt Metropolitan Police Officer Michael Fanon. A group within the rioters circled Fanon and protected him until help arrived, saving his life. Now, I'm not exonerating the conduct of people engaging in violence, but let's be clear. For the people that entered the Capitol building, if you took a hundred of those people, you would have a hundred people with one hundred different personalities, one hundred different agenda agendas, one hundred different mindsets. Thankfully, there was no one storming into the Capitol building who was going to carry out some kind of mass shooting like uh, what happened in Las Vegas or San Bernardino, California. From the photographs that everyone has seen, that people were just milling around like tourists looking at all the stuff inside the Capitol building. Uh, no one looted. No one tried to burn down the Capitol building. No one tried to execute the people huddled in uh, various uh, rooms in the Capitol building. For the most part, people were trying to treat this just like the way Democrats in 2011 stormed the Wisconsin State Capitol Rotunda. No guns were pulled then in 2011. No one was shot. <laughs> and the next sentence there, uh, bye for now, uh, self-explanatory. Uh, I wonder if any police officers said that to Democrat protesters who stormed and occupied the Wisconsin Capitol building in 2011. Uh, none of them faced 10-year prison sentences in a federal court, I can tell you that. Again, this still hasn't been pulled down by Kamala Harris or her incoming political team. I don't know why. But on June 1st, 2020, Kamala Harris proudly tweeted that she would help pay the bail of violent looters and arsonists related to the George Floyd protests of 2020. So, Kamala Harris, she has quite a track record here on whether she's opposed or favoring violent protests against the federal and state government. Hmm. Interesting to know, Kamal. We'll remember that whenever you're appointed as the next president. This was inevitable. If you've got a hundred or a thousand different people entering the Capitol building last week, the news will eventually get out that not all of them were fans of President Trump. These are people with widely different agendas. One of them was left-wing activist John Sullivan. John Sullivan was one of those who broke into the Capitol building. Founder of protest group Insurgent USA, he recorded himself entering through a Capitol window. This is a violent anarchist bent on the violent overthrow of the legal and elected government of the United States. Fox News has a more balanced story on him. He had previously called for revolution and to rip Trump out of his office. And so, this just goes to show you that when the House of Representatives wants to rush to impeachment because every single person entering the Capitol building was operating on the same mindset and same instructions and same reasons for being there, you don't rush to impeachment because there's a wide group of diverse people who entered the Capitol building with different plans and different agendas. We're going to finish the news wrap up with a uh, double feature for Kamala Harris. First of all, there's this news story. Kamala Harris had accused Brett Kavanaugh of being a rapist, with zero proof and zero evidence. There's a very strange attitude for a former prosecutor of California to take to attack someone over hearsay. Democrat abortion activists acting precisely on Kamala Harris's incitement against the government stormed the Senate building in 2018 and invaded the sacred ground and sacred building, which we've been lectured about all week, was something as sacred ground and a sacred building, you just didn't enter willy-nilly. As the protest entered the Senate Hart building, Capitol Police started arresting protesters one by one. Notice that no one was greeted with drawn guns. No one was shot. Among those arrested was Amy Schumer, who is a cousin to Senate Minority Leader, soon-to-be Senate Majority Leader, Chuck Schumer. So there you have it. The Senate building, the Capitol Hill, the Capitol is not sacred ground when Democrat activists burst into a hearing 
and need to be arrested by Capitol Police. So we're going to wrap up here with a very light item. I was considering, based on the unity required for this incoming inauguration, I want to show peace, I want to show unity. So I was shopping for perhaps a Kamala Harris t-shirt to wear to celebrate the inauguration. I'm not a big fan of Kamala Harris, but what if I buy a t-shirt of hers in my size? That would show that I'm willing to reach, you know, the olive branch across the aisle, that I'm not full of hate, I'm not full of division. I'm willing to put on a Kamala Harris t-shirt if it means taking just a small step at healing the, our country's divisions on my personal level. Speaking of unity, if you want to do something to heal the division in our country, take up a New Year's resolution to focus on a charity. Instead of posting about politics all year like I did, I'm going to focus on Operation Phantom Support. This is a well-known charity whose mission is to assist soldiers, veterans, and first responders that are in need. It was rated in 2019 as a top-rated nonprofit. Looking at Kamala Harris t-shirts, I noticed a theme here. Pictures of Kamala Harris as a little girl with the quote, that little girl was me. Why was this important to make a t-shirt out of this? What does this reference about Kamala Harris? And they have a dozen variations of this t-shirt to show your support for Kamala Harris. Then I remembered, last year, presidential candidate Kamala Harris accused presidential candidate Joe Biden of being a lifelong racist uh, opposing civil rights measures for people like her, for people who look like her, for persons of color. And she lectured him, that little girl was me. Go watch the video. Look at Joe Biden's face when she accuses him of being a lifelong racist. Clear proof that Joe Biden did not select her at all to be his vice president. He was ordered to select Kamala Harris as his vice president by the people who ran his presidential campaign I don't plan to make a review of his inauguration. For me, American politics is about unity, and I will show my unity by not making any more commentary or videos about our political divisions or problems or polarizations, and just give that benefit of a doubt to the incoming administration of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. This is the benefit of a doubt that Democrats did not extend to Donald Trump. There was no honeymoon after the 2016 presidential election. The entire Democratic Party mobilized to use Hillary Clinton's Steele dossier to damage and harm Trump's ability to govern, as was his legal right. Uh, so it's important that I not duplicate what the Democratic Party attempted to do by denying Donald Trump the 2016 presidential win. I'm not that sort of person. I'd like to be a better person and set a better example. So I hope this is my final political video. Just wanted to close with a little funny thing there. And maybe that little girl will be, will be me as I put on this t-shirt as a silent, subtle protest against the incoming Biden administration. Good night and God bless.